Okay, yeah, it's, show, it's showing that we're on already. Yeah. So let me get my screen back. Okay, here we go. So today's broadcast, I believe, is being sponsored by uh, Vermi Freeberg, I think it was this week, um, in honor of his son's engagement, and that everybody should be have chizuk in in, the, in in this time now, especially we were zeichel to have shul again, as uh, Shmuel says, "Samachti b'aymimli beis We're happy that we could even go to shul, even though we can't get inside, but at least we can go there. Okay, Zakta Halak Bilar. Omali Rafuna La Rabba Bare. Rafuna told Rabba his son, My time la shrika kame drabhista. Why isn't why aren't you going to learn by Rabhista the Khadaton Shmaite? Because he says he's he has sharp and and good halachas. So it's interesting to note that Rabhista and Rafuna were in a stipple, they had a stipple following guy. And mm-hmm. Because of that, they didn't talk to each other for a long period of time. Yet, even though that was the case, Rafuna was urging his son to go learn by Rav Chista. So you see that for sure it was because he wanted his son to go learn by Rav Chista. So, so uh, Rabbi told his father, Rafuna, I should go, my, Ezel Lagabe, I should go to him, to Rav Chista. If I go learn by him, he's not going to teach me learning. He's going to hack me a chinik with nonsense. Moisef Lee, Bimil da Alma. He's going to start hack me a chinik with, with nonsense. Rashi says, Moshiveni Lefanov, Bidivri Chinam, Sheinai Toyer. Amulay, for instance, one of the things he's going to tell me is Mandaay Lebeis Akise, someone who goes to the Beis Akise. You see, we didn't get away from the subject matter yet. He shouldn't sit down quickly. Rashi says, because it can cause damage uh, down there. He shouldn't sit down quickly. And he shouldn't work too hard at uh, at producing there. Because the high karkashta, the uh, the piyatabas, atlashini sits on three muscles. And he, we're afraid that if they force too hard, or he sits down too quickly, too forcefully, Maybe one of those muscles will become dislodged. And it'll be a sakana. So I should go there. That's what I want to hear. I want to go to hear a bathroom talk. I want to, I want to go there entire. Omalei. So Rafuna told Rabba, who Asik Bachai He is being Isaac and telling you important information as to how to stay healthy. And you're saying that's nonsense. Surely you should go to him because he's teaching you important things how to stay healthy. What if somebody had in front of him, he had a choice between box A, where there's a rock, cheres, box B, where there's cheres. So we had already learned that uh, cheres could endanger you, and it could cause kshafim to be chal on you. Nevertheless, Rav Huna Omer, Rav Huna said, "Mekanech b'tshuar ve'ein mekanech b'cheres." Rav Chista Omer, "Mekanech b'cheres ve'ein mekanech b'tshuar." You're better off being mekanech with the cheres. Frank the Gemara makes you how you'll find the tshuar v'cheres, mekanech b'cheres, and mekanech b'tshuar. To you, to the Rav Huna, it seems it seems like this is in, this is consistent. With Rav Chista and inconsistent with Rav Huna, so if you're more tired, you're more Rav and Rav Papa. Come here, Rav Chista. Rav and Rav Papa was mafarish this price in front of Rav Chista. I'll leave it to Rav Huna to support Rav Huna. Shita is it's not speaking about the regular chayres. It's the ugnei kelim. When are you supposed to use? When are you supposed to use um, chayres rather than a tzror? It's for ugnei kelim, where it's a smooth rim. That's not sharp, so there's no opportunity to to hurt yourself. Rashi says, "Shem chalakim, they're smooth. They ain't makarin sabosher, and they will not damage the buzzer." I what about the kshafim? So I, I don't know the answer about kshafim, unless it's possible that maybe the only type of the only type of cheres that's bad for kshafim could be is a cheres that also is dangerous physically. 
which means the, the a sharp cheres, but a smooth cheres maybe does not uh, hurt you for chopping. I don't know. I don't know my uh, hilchos uh, wiping materials that clear to be able to tell you if there's a if, if there's a danger of chopping. But the, but the Gemara still line that Rufuna Rufuna learns that Rufuna agrees that you're not allowed you're not allowed to use a I'm sorry Rufuna agrees maybe you're not allowed to use it if it's sharp and Rufuna agrees that you might be allowed to use a cheres if it's smooth. It's not a little bit more right what if he had rocks and he had grass? Once you use a rock, you're not supposed to use grasses. And Rashi says the reason why you shouldn't use grass is because grass is moist and that can also cause the uh, cause a cut. And the other man over held you should use grass. I guess it's softer. The ain't mekanech mature, and you cannot use rocks. May se fake the Gemara mekanech with dabar shor or shor la display. She no vatayis hachtach toynus no shoris. If someone uses something to wipe with that is that that is uh, combustible, you his she knows how to attack hachtach toynus no shoris. It'll cause the muscles there to get dislodged. So how could you say that you use a sovim? How could one of the man dabar say use a sovim? I a sovim. Is combustible. So it's more like kasha. Havalach and habiyavation. It makes a difference if it's moist or if it's if it's dry. If they're moist, then they're not combustible because they're the the, the 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 fire won't light up something that's moist. But if they're dry, then they're combustible, and then fire can be shown and then you're allowed to use it. So the question what could, is, what could possibly what could light that? Oh, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. That, that, and I, I was sort of getting to it. Nowadays, the toilet paper that we use is very combustible. So how could we use it? So toilet I, we use is combustible? Toilet paper. Toilet, toilet paper. Very combustible, yeah. We're talking about, we're talking about the, the thing you use to wipe yourself. Right. You think you know how to use something to wipe yourself that's combustible. So how could you use paper? So I'm thinking, I don't know if it's true. I'm just combustible or flammable. I mean flammable. Flammable. No, flammable is flammable is, is something like gasoline. Combustible means it's possible for it to light on fire. So it doesn't have to be flammable, but it, if it's combustible it's, means okay. It could that a fire could light it. it it's possible for it to, to, to okay. light. Flammable is something that's much more volatile, something that'll 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 uh you, you if if a truck is hauling a load of paper, it doesn't have to have a placard that says flammable. But if the truck is hauling a lot of propane, it has to have a placard that says that says flammable. So combustible is it means anything that could light on fire would be combustible. Flammable is something that is a fuel. Um, it's a real fuel, uh, such as propane. But that, that would that, that would be called flammable. A call upon them, I was just thinking to myself, so so toilet paper we do use. I, I it's combustible. So I, I, I thought maybe maybe the reason why you can't use something combustible is not because of its combustion properties, because the likelihood of it going on fire while it's being used is nil. There's no source of ignition when you're going to the bathroom. I just thought it's a simon that it has other properties that will that will cause damage, like maybe if it's maybe anything that was combustible in those days, um, maybe would also have a, a bri bristles or it would prickly and cause other damage. Um, but we have toilet paper that's that's even though it's combustible, it's soft. It might not have the other properties that the Gemara associated with combustible. That's just a guess. But where's the source of the fire? Even if there is no source of fire. The problem with something combustible might not be the fact that it's combustible. It might be that anything that's combustible, also its consistency it will damage just because you're using it. Nothing to do with fire. Because I can't imagine that there's a chashash that there are fires going to occur while you're in the bathroom. What, so what are we worried about exactly? I guess any. I guess the, the makeup of, of something that they would use that would have been combustible um, such as a type of wood or a type of grass, 
maybe that could also hurt them physically, physically the way the, the actual uh, consistency of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the item would scratch them or, or cause, cause uh, damage down there. Maybe it was just rough. It was rough. And that's right. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a certain roughness to anything. When you've got very smooth leaves that are combustible, but that maybe they have a certain roughness to them that could cause damage. And they use the word they, they use the word combustible because anything combustible had such a certain consistency that the, that the, its, its consistency would be something that could scratch them or something. But we've now we've developed new products that don't have those bad qualities, even though they are combustible. So that's just a guess. I don't know. If someone has to go to the washroom, and he holds it in. So we know that's a, not a healthy situation. It's going to cause him to have bad breath. And Rashi explains, since he's holding it in and it's plugged from one end, it's going to sort of make it, uh, uh, Rome is going to waft through his piping system and come out the other end. So he's going to have bad breath. It's going to absorb into a system and his whole body will become sweaty and smelly. Tanya, we learned of Raisa, that it makes his whole body sweaty and smelly. The Tanya, we learned, and we had this Kamara earlier, if someone needs to go to the washroom and he eats while he still has his fuel inside him, it's like an oven that we're using its own ashes to reheat itself. And the Brisa goes on, that this is the beginning stages that lead to Zuhama. So you see that sort of holy in, having a backup, having a, a bottom like a clog in the uh, digestive system causes the whole body to smoke. So what if someone has to go to the washroom but He's constipated, and he doesn't want to have this zuhama problem. But but it, it ain't going. Omer Abchista, this is what you should do. It's a great laxative. Yamud v'yeshiv, yamud v'yeshiv. If you do squats, that will uh, that'll uh, stimulate your bowels, and hopefully that'll make it flow. Abchadon min arda amar, He should move to this position, to that position. He just shift himself around in the hopes that that will stimulate his bowels. Rav Nuno Amar, he says, let's take a more direct, a more direct, uh, a more direct option. He should, he should push something. He should put a, push a rock inside, physically open it up, and that that'll that'll work. That'll cause things to flow well. Rav Amri, and Rav says, you see, don't think about it. If he's not thinking about it, then it's not going. It's not going to stimulate his bowels, and it's not going to come out. So what, type of, what type of suggestion is that? Or Malay, he told him, "You should not think about anything else. His total focus should be on getting that out. And if, if his total focus is on it, then it'll work." I once saw an Arab merchant. Uh, uh, and it doesn't say merchant, it just says Shmuel. I think it was an Arab merchant. The Kam Vyasiv, Kam Vyasiv. He used the first Eitzel that the priest suggested and he did squats. Add the Shafach Kiktair until it flowed like a pot, like you're dumping out a pot. It's a good laxative. Tanarabon. And Nichnes was Hudus Kva. If someone is going into a Sudus Kva, and Rashi says that Sudas you know, can last several hours, and it's very um, it's very inappropriate, embarrassing to get up in the middle for him to get up in the middle and excuse himself to go to the washroom. So he needs to make sure that his tank is completely empty, so that he'll be able to withstand the entire time and stay there for the whole Suda without interrupting. So what do you do? What do you do to use as a laxative like the day before? You have to take a colonoscopy. A colonoscopy. So what, you, what you're supposed to do is yahalach yud pamen shall arba arba amis. Walk ten groups of four amis each, and after each pause, by each pause, try to go, and that'll work well. 
those who learn, it's it's four groups of walking ten amas each. And Vinifna, and then you'll be able to clear yourself out completely during that activity. Then you can go into the Suda knowing that you're completely clean and you have a high storage capacity to <coughs> go sit in your seat where you won't have to get up and excuse you from that. I get, they probably didn't have bathrooms in their wedding halls in those days. S similar to nowadays. It's a good it's advice for being nothing. outside. <laughs> That's right. Before you go to shul, I guess we're going to have to stop early because it's going to take the whole activity we have to do now before we go. How big of a, of a, of a piece of cheres, a shard, do you need to, that it's significant that will say it's also to carry? If you were if you were piling up wood and some pieces of wood were thicker on one end than on the other end, like a typical log, we're afraid if you pile one on top of the other, it's going to put a lot more pressure on the thicker end than on the thinner end because they don't sit, the wood will not sit flat on one another. So what you do is you put shards in to create spacers so each of the pieces of wood will sit flat one upon the other. That's one shot. And the other shot is, or another reason why you would use it is you just put shards underneath the whole pile so it shouldn't sit directly on the ground. And then, and then uh, it, won't, it won't rot out. Because things will rot out if you put them straight on the ground. That's what Rabbi Yehuda holds. He is... He holds you need a little, little, a little more. Ramirez Machmer, um, uh, I'm sorry, Ramirez Machmer is just a little less. And you just need a shard that's big enough to to uh, lift up a coal with. Now we know that that um, Harris is not such a conductor of electricity, like of heat. So it's not such a conductor of heat, like metal is. So if you hold it with a shard, you can hold the, uh, you can hold the gachelis, you can hold a coal with it without burning your head. It's even a smaller piece, a piece that can hold a revius of mashkin. Omer Meir, Dr. Meir, even though I don't have a 100% araya to my halacha, that if it's even big enough, even if it's not big enough to support wood, but if it's big enough just to handle coals with, that's considered a choshev amount of cheres. But I do have Zechel I do have a, an interesting pasuk that indicates that there's a cheshivas of a shard that's able to be used just to pick up the gachelis. Because the pasuk says, and the pasuk is discussing at one, on the Malchus of one of the Goyim, that it's going to fall apart like a cheap deck of cards. And the pasuk says, Ushavara keshever nevel yoytrim kasus. When it when this malchus crumbles apart, it's going to be like a broken set of shards. Uh, there's there's no bonus. the even in the broken shards, each of the broken pieces of this broken shard will be useless. You won't even find a charash lachtos esh You won't be able to find even a piece that you could use to be machtos to move a coal around. And you won't be able to find a piece big enough, the Lakshif Mayim together, and to carry water with. Zokter Meir, Zokter Meir from the Pesach that says, La Yimase bin Machtisasa, Yicheresh, Lachto Yisesh Miikoid, that shows that what the, what the Novi is saying, you won't, it'll be so broken, you won't even be able to find a piece that you can use to move a coal around. So you see, that's a significant use of Cheres. And the Novi saying, you won't even have enough cheres to do that. So that's a little bit of a remez to the fact that uh, a broken shard is still a dover choshev that you can at least move a coal around with it. Omer Rabbi Yossi, Misham Raya, your same pasuk is a riot to me because the end of the pasuk says, meaning not only won't you be able to find a shroud that's big enough, or it's not a shroud, it's a shard, big enough to hold a coal with, you won't even be able to find a piece big enough to hold water with it. So Rabbi Yishis tells Rabbi Meir, you're a Pasuk, if you read to the end of the Pasuk, you would see 
that when the puzzle goes right there and says you won't even find a piece that can hold water, clearly it's giving significance to even a piece that can hold water. Zok the head of the water. Iboilu. Shiur the mayor, nofish, or shiur the biosi nofish. What requires a bigger piece of broken terrace to hold a reviews of water or to hold a coal of it? Mistavra, if you think about it, shiur the biosi nofish. It would make sense to say, how big of a piece do I already need to hold a coal? A very small piece. But to hold water or reviews of water, I probably need a bigger piece. So th- without looking at any psukim, it seems that the shear of Abyoshi is greater. Um, and the and, and the uh, shear of Yehuda is small. But Omikra, but if you look at the Pasuk and how the Pasuk uh, puts these things in order, Shear of Mer Novish. It's clearly that the shear of Mer is Novish. Because what's the Novish saying? Not only won't you have a piece that's three inches, you won't even have a piece that's two inches. He saw Kadaidah, Shiur, Rabbi Nafish. If you hold that the shear of holding water is bigger, then the, the context of the Pasuk doesn't make sense. Light love, Bamana Sutra, rather light love, Bamana Rabbo. What did the Pasuk say? You won't even be able to find a, a shard that's big enough to hold a fire with, and, which is only two inches long, and you won't even be able to find a shard that you can hold a reviz of Mashka with that's four inches. It doesn't make sense. You're usually you're working your way down to show how broken down this cheres will be. So it's Gemara Rava Amar Abaye Masnisanami Abaye Masnisanami Lachtesh Eish Miyakid Gedoyla. What what uh, Rav Meir is learning is that Avada it's bigger. I we know you only need a very small piece of cheres to be able to hold a coal. Rav Meir is talking about. Not stop a, a fire where you're taking the coal out of it. He's talking about a big bonfire. A big bonfire, you can't even get close to it. So in order to be able to reach in and move a coal, you'd need a much bigger piece of cheres. And that's what that's what Reb Meir is talking about. He means I need, a, I need a big piece of cheres in order to be able to in order to be able to take a coal out of a fire that's in a bonfire, so I can't even get close to it. And he says it's even a smaller piece, a piece that would hold the revius. And then it makes sense in the order of the pasuk. Now we have to figure out how our mayor deals with the Yosef's kasha. The Yosef said Misham Raya, meaning the pasuk lists off as the last item of a lachshef mind together, which would indicate that that's the smallest piece. So why is it? And that's about the hazachshivas. So how is it that your mayor settles on the larger piece that's made to move a coal around? So tomorrow. Shaper Kamala Rabyoshi Lab Mayor, Abyoshi has a good time. The Pasuk also gives significance to a piece that can hold the reviews. Rab Mayor, let me buy Kamar. The way Rab Mayor learns the Pasuk is as follows. Loy me boy me the the Khashavla in she the loitishka the loyishtaka clay. Not only will you not be able to find a shroud, it's not sure, a shard, a piece of cheris that's so small. Nevertheless, it's still khashuf to people. And it's still considered an object, such as a piece that you would use to take a coal out of a bonfire. Even if even if you find you won't even be able to find a, a shard that's not even chash of a person, even that you won't find. So now the way the Pasuk reads is very yishmak, because it's actually not just an example of something smaller, it's an example of a whole different category. So the 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 cheris, the cheris will be broken so small that you won't be able to find a piece of value. And then the Navi goes right there, and you won't even be able to find a piece that has no value. So therefore, the mayor says that the piece that has value is still the piece that you use to take a coal out of a bonfire, but the piece that's only big enough to hold a little bit of mashka, that has no value. And therefore, uh, the, the Israel saw would not apply to it on Shabbos. Hadin Allah Hamoiti Yain, Hadin Allah Hamoiti Yain, Hadin Allah Hamoiti Yain. The, the next parak, uh, the article uh, speaks out, the Shaykh is that listed this parak is because it's going to be discussing, it's going to be discussing um, another item and what, what sure it has to be. And it, 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 it involves around 
it revolves around this the sugya, so it gets into it. That's what Rashi says over here. Should the boy lumisli ba'dayu min nine shomer inchitin samila? Since it's going to talk about how you know you're allowed to wash a mila, kailu lahanach damin lo. It brings in other halachas that are similar to that, even though they're not at all negate to Shabbos. So we start off going on a little of a tangent. The Zok to Helega Mishnah. Amar Rabbi Kiva, Ninai Lavoy Dezara. How do we know that Avoy Dezara, Shemitama Bamasa, that if you carry it, there's a Tumas Mas on it? Kenida, just like Anida. So not only is there a Tumma Kala, if you touch it, you become Tame, but if you carry it, even though you don't touch it, it has a Tumma Chamur and it'll be the Tame you. Shinamar, because the Pasuk says, let's read it inside, it says, Tizrein, with Himesim is Tsipoi, Psile, Kasbacha, Ves Afudas, Masecha Sahavach. In other words, you should get rid of, you should get rid of the Hoy Desaris. Tizrein, Kamaidava, spread them out, throw them out, get rid of them. Like an Isha Dava, Dava is an Ida. Say, Time Arloi, tell the Hoy Desar, get out of here. So it compares it to a Dava, Dava is an Ida. Manida, Metama Bamasa, just like Anida is Tame, the Tumas Masa, Af, Avoid Zara, so to Avoid Zara is Metama Bamasa as a Tumas Masa. Tanan Hosom, we learned over there in the Brasset. Misha Haya, the Bach changes the years over here, Koisloi, Somuch Avoid Zara. I believe the Bach says Koisloi. Base. Base. It's Dal. Misha Haya, Koisloi, Somuch La Shera. If someone's wall was near an Ashera, Vinofa, and it fell. Now Rashi tells us that when it means it was near the Ashera, it means Shoya Oisoi Koiso Mechitza Af Lebeis Avodizor, which means he shared a wall. His neighbor was a base Avodizor, and he shared a wall, and that wall fell down. Vinofa, and it fell down. Also, of Noisei, if the wall is right on the border, that means part of the wall is on the side of the Avodah Zarah, and part of the wall is in my Rishos, in my Chatzar. I'm not allowed to rebuild it. Why? I'm building up the wall that belongs to Avodah Zarah. And you're not allowed to do that. So Ketid Yasef, you do want to have that wall. So what do you do? What you have to do is you have to mark your property line and then you have to stay back for Amish, so you're far enough away from the property line, and that's where you should build a new wall completely into your territory. I just saw a video. The Israeli army was talking, was trying to explain to the public what the blue line is and what the fence is. The blue line is the northern border of Israel, the line between Israel and Lebanon, and that's recognized as the border. And it's called the blue line because the UN marked it with a series of blue markers. Now, the Israelis built a fence there, an anti-terrorism fence, to stop people from coming over. But the fence that they built doesn't run directly on the blue line. It runs inside Israeli territory because sometimes the blue line was a place where it was difficult to build a fence. So they built it based on where the terrain allowed them to build it um, several meters, maybe even hundreds of meters south of the border, which means that technically, even on the other side of the Israeli fence, is still Israeli territory up until the blue line. And there was allegations, there must be allegations, every time the Israelis operate on the north side of that fence, the UN starts screaming, and the, the Arabs start screaming, that the Jews are invading our territory, and they're violating the UN armistice, and they're, and they're crossing into Lebanese territory. So the Israeli army put out a video to show that just because they're crossing their own fence, that's recessed into their territory, it doesn't mean that they're crossing the blue line. They're well within their limits. So I guess they're treating it like a void desora, that they don't even want to build a fence on the border. <clears throat> their territory. Yes, see? Yes. Sorry. So, <clears throat> sorry. If he, uh, if he builds, even if he builds it like further in for Alas, that means, but eventually, if there's no other wall on the other side, that the other, the other guy with the void desora is just going to extend his void desora all the way to the wall, no? Um, I, I guess he'll he'll scream and not allow it. But the main point that Rashi says is 
now you now the, now the wall doesn't belong to Abu I think that the, the what we're trying to accomplish by building it fully on his territory is now it's only his wall. It's not their wall. Okay. Right. It's not a shared wall anymore. Zotahela Gamora Vatya. Kate Yaza, Kodish Losashla Dawa Ramsuboy. Zot the Hela Gamora Vatya. Hoya Shaloi. What if he has a wall that's right on the border? So let's say your wall is four twachim thick. So two twachim are on the Avoy Desire side, and two twachim are on his side. So the loch is Nidoin Mechza al Mechza. It splits 50 50, which means, Zok Rashi, a Mechza Shaloi, Nechshaves, the Arba Ami Shal Kniso. If 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 the original fence was right on the border and two tvachim of it was in of a desired territory and two tvachim of it was in his territory, when you count the four amis that he has to sort of make his property smaller because he's now building the wall four amis into his territory, you can count from the actual border, which will be the center line of the wall. You don't have to start counting from the inside of the wall because then he's going to be losing an additional two tvachim of territory. He can count from the center line of the wall, which is, his, which is where his territory actually begins, and he doesn't have to count from the inside surface of his wall, which would diminish his rishos by an extra two-twelve. All of the components of the wall, that fell down, that was the wall of the Zorah, is metamen kisheretz. They're tummy like kisheretz. Shenemar, because the Pesach says, regarding the Zorah, shaket to shaketzenu. So the Pesach says here, loy sovi sayevi al v'isecha, loy yisecherem kamoyu, shouldn't bring up Zorah into your home, shaket to shaketzenu, besides to zavenu kisherem hu. And whoever looks into the Torah remembers that the Rebbe used to say that about television. Loy sovi sayevi al v'isecha, it's worse than the shirts, which is only metam of amaga. It's even metam of amasa like anida, shenemar tizren kemaydova, like we said the pasuk earlier. Ma nida metam of amasa, just like nida's tummy, merely if she's supported by something, even though she's not touching it, she'll, it'll be metam of that. Afavodizara metam of amasa, avodizara is metam of as well. Omar Rava, Tizrein the Omar Kra, the pasuk that the that we quote in the pasuk that says Tizrein the Omar Kra means Nachirinu Minach Kizar, make it foreign to you, like Kizar, like an outsider. Say Taimerle, tell it to leave, which is what the pasuk says. Ki Chanes Al Taimerle, don't let it come in. Omar Rava, Omar Rava, and Rabbi said. The masa the chula amaloi pligi the metama. Everybody agrees that anida is tomei the masa. It's not a machloikis about whether or not you're metama the masa. To ishkus to anida, the pasuk clearly compares avodizara to anida, which we know is metama the masa. He pligi the machloikis as to whether or not it's metama the masa is be'evin misma. If it's a very big hard stone that doesn't budge when she stands on it, Rabbi Kiva Savar. Have a kiva holds kinido, ma nido metama be'evin misama. Just like a nido will become tome, even if she stands on the evin misama, afa vayizara metama be'evin misama. For avon zavik kisheretz, ma sheretz le metama be'evin misama, afa vayizara le metama be'evin misama. So let's see Rashi um, to describe the evin misama what it is. Evin shesamua al gaba yisedos. If you put up a stone onto a stand, the kelim tachteha. And underneath this stone, you have Caleb. Kedichsev vayisis evet chado v'samta alpum guba v'nida oizov yoshin alel. And you have a nida oizov sitting on top of the stone. It's not budging the stone. The stone is is rock solid. Afapi shelo yichpido yala Caleb, even though the weight of the woman is not being transferred to the Caleb that's underneath this rock. Which is anchored in place properly, it doesn't budge. So even though there's this kalim underneath that rock that might be touching that rock, but the nida is not actually placing her weight. Her weight is actually not being transferred 
to the item that's underneath that rock. Tameim ha-kelo. The kelo will still be tamei. Dichsev kol ha-shiyir tachta. Anything that's under the zav is, is tamei, even though the weight of the zav is not being transferred to that object. So that special chomer of tuma, of tumas masa, that applies to a zav, that even though the weight of the person is not being transferred through the stone. Yes, what do you mean? Kelim, what do you mean by the weight not being transferred? You sit on something, it, the weight gets transferred. So Rashi says that you have a stone that's sitting on a stand, and these kalim are underneath that stand. Oh, I see. I thought the kalim were part of the stand. Okay, I got it. Sorry, thank you. So, so and the, the, Evan Mist was also used in the context of a very, very large stone that that uh, that has something maybe under one of its edges. The stone is so big, it's not budging because anyone's standing on it, and therefore, again, it's not transferring its weight onto the item underneath it. Nevertheless, there's a special chomer by Nida and by Zov that the Tumah does transfer to the object. And that and the, the Shaila is, does Avoid the Zara have that same chomer? So Rabbi Kiva holds the Avoid the Zara has that chomer, and it's Metama that Mismah. Rabbi Kiva holds the Avoid the Zara has that chomer, and it's Metama that Mismah. Rabbi Kiva holds the Avoid the Zara has that chomer, and it's Metama that Mismah. Let me just double check in the art scroll how Evan Misma is uh, pronounced. Is it, I think it's Misma. What does he say over here? No. It's Misma. It's a Misma. Can you see? It looks like it's a Misma. Misma. It's Evan Misma. Okay. Zokta Hilo Gemara Vaitim. Lo Rebbe Kiva, lo Ma Hil Chosah Is Kesel Sheretz. If we're saying that the, when we're, we're looking at the Hilchus Tumah that applies to Avod Zora, it's parallel, that out of Anida, so why did the Torah ever say Shaket to Shaketenu as if to indicate that it has similarities to the Tumah of Sheretz? So it's Gemara, L'meshamshem, so Prashi, She'ena Kelem HaMeshamshem Metamim Loi V'masa Loi V'masamim If it's merely Kelem that are Meshamish, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Tumah, that's not going to be Tommy. I forgot what that means. Uh, I, was, I was tired last night. So it says, is, um, Shumsha says, an idol was compared to a sheritz. They teach its service items that they will only generate Tumma through contact like a sheritz, but the idol itself will generate Tumma even through being carried off. So if you have the Kalem, the Kalem that service of our desire, they, those, do not, those do not generate any type of Tumma at all. The, the tumma that we're talking about, that Avodah Zarah generates, is only a tumma that's that's for the Avodah Zarah itself. Zog the Hele Gemara Vater, the Rabbonon, the Mahilchza, is Kishla Nida. Regabi, what is there a comparison to Nida since they hold that it's not Tommy Levin Misma? So we're comparing it only to Sheretz. What, what, what halacha is the Torah trying to teach us by comparing Avodah Zarah to Nida? So tomorrow, Lamasa to carrying it. Avoloil Evan Misma, the Lahaki Ahani Akesha the Sheretz. So Sheretz is telling us, yes, compare it. Compare it to Nida a little bit, but not completely. By Nida, we know there's a Tum of Evan Misma, but that, the, the, the fact that we compare it to Sheretz as well, backs it off a little bit and says it doesn't have all the Tum of Masa, only the Tum of Masma uh, of something that it actually transfers. It's way too. Correct Gemara, the Luxor Achmona Lenevela. Why don't we make a comparison to Nevela? So Trashi, the Ispa Masa, the Lesba Avin Misma. If the Torah only wanted to apply Tumas Masa to Avod Yazara and not Evan Misma, why did the Torah compare it to Nida and then back it off using a comparison to Sheretz? The Torah could have picked something that has the exact same halacha as what the Torah wants to apply to Avodah Zarah. That would have been better. Then we wouldn't have had to use the Hekish of Sheretz to correct the Hekish to Nida Lamute Evan Misam. Zog to Gemara, Lukbilish Rachman Lelevela, it could have. Elaman Nida, Eni Levorin, Af Avodah Zarah, Eni Levorin. So Trashi, Im nechtach ever mimeno mitama the mass of oil, mishum toyer mishum toyer ever minachai. If you cut off an aver from it, 
that if you, if you cut off an, an aver from a woman who's a nida, it's metam of mas and oil as aver min a chai, avoloi mishum taris aver min a nida. But it's not because of taris aver min a nida. In afkamina, avoloi metam of aver min So what we're saying is, even a nida, even a nida, ma nida, in a le nevar, and just like a nida, uh, when it when it when it's tumas evarim, it will not be metam of misma. Af avoid the zara, ain't the levarin. So to the avoid the zara will not become tummy. So he's actually learning it from nida, and he owes nida also in certain cases is not metam of misma. That is, if 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 uh, aver of the nida is cut off. The laha the boy Reb Chama Bar Guria. That the Reb Chama Guria asked as following shaila: Avoid the zara, yes, no levarin, or ain't the levarin. He had a shaila by avoid the zara. If a part of the avoid the zara would also be metam of misma. Tivshit le meha, why don't you bring a raya from our sugya? The Rabbanon in the According to the Rabbanon, it's not metama if it's just a piece of the Avodzar. So tomorrow, because of Chama Bar Guria, I'll leave it to Rabbi Kiva Boyula. Rabbi Chama Bar Guria was asking the Shaila, according to Rabbi Kiva, where we do compare it to Anita, and it is metama Bevan Misma. Rabbi Lazar Amar, Bevan Misma, the Chula Amal, Loi Pligi, the Loi Metama. Rabbi Lezer holds that both Rabbi Kiva and the Chachamim hold that avoid the Zohar is not a time of Evan Nisma. Ki Pligi Vimasa. They're actually arguing if indeed is a time of Vimasa at all. Rabbi Kiva is over Kanida. Rabbi Kiva holds it's like Anida. Ma Nida Matama Vimasa, just like Anida is Matama Vimasa, Af avoid the Zohar Matama Vimasa. Rabbi Lezer is over Kisheret, just like a Sheret. Ma Sheret is not Matama Vimasa at all, only Vimaga, Af avoid the Zohar. Loi mitama b'masa, so too avoid yizora will not be mitama b'masa at all. Loi b'zoi v'Rabbi Kiva l'mai hilchos or ishkus l'sheretz. So according to Rabbi Kiva, who holds that it's not mitama b'mis b'mimisma, it's only mitama b'masa alone. So why did the Torah have to compare avoid yizora to sheretz as well? So tomorrow l'misham sheha. The same thing. The kalim of avoid yizora will not have any tum at all. If Rabbanu l'mai hilchos or ishkus l'nida. And the Rabban who hold there is no Thomas Masa by Avodah Zorah. Why Bechlal are we comparing? Why Bechlal is the Torah comparing Avodah Zorah to Thomas Nida? But it's more Manida in Levorim, just like Nida doesn't have its Thomas if it's in pieces. Avodah Zorah in Levorim, so too Avodah Zorah will not be Metama uh, if it's just a piece of the Avodah Zorah. Then I guess we could stop here. Let me see what time it is. Yes. Just on time because we have to yes. seven o'clock. Yes. Yes. Perfect timing. Right. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Yes, yes. Okay, hey, guys, give me your first hand report of what it's like because we're meeting again with the roof today. It was very hot. I mean, hot. Sorry. I